And good morning. Good morning. Let's try that again without the without the interruption. Good morning. I'm so thrilled uh, that you're here with me this morning and that uh, Marilyn Barefoot is here with me this morning. Uh, welcome to Coffee and Conversations. I hope you have your coffee. Marilyn and I have ours. And I want to introduce Marilyn to you. Marilyn Barefoot, I have known for years. We're both very young, but I've known Marilyn for years and uh, from our advertising days. And she is truly an innovative innovation and creativity authority. So rather than talk about her, she's waiting in the green room. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Marilyn on. There you are, Marilyn. You're live. Good morning, Libby. Good morning. I, it's so exciting. I feel so important to have been in the green room. Oh, isn't it fun? Yeah, it's like I'm a celebrity. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Next up, we'll be on Marilyn Dennis, I'm sure. <laughs> um, we should be. I, we I should be for sure. Back. Well, we should check our spam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Marilyn, for being here. I, you know, we have known each other a very long time. And I, I left advertising years and years ago to do some other things. You have had, you had a stellar, very successful career in advertising. Uh, and, you know, where creativity is key really around executing an external marketing message. And you've translated that experience and those years of being creative into a business focused on being successful by using innovation and creativity as a business strategy. So why don't we start there and you tell us a little bit about what that journey has been or what that journey was. Fabulous. Thank you, Libby. Um, my entire background in the advertising agency business was always a suit. I was never a creative person. I always wanted to be a creative person. I tried to always get the desk that was closest to the art department so I could smell the markers uh, back when people used markers and did drawings of concepts. Um, my, my first exposure to what I believe was real creativity was in a brainstorming that was run by Karen Palmer of Bozell Palmer Bonner was just Palmer Bonner at the time. And, and she did some creativity exercises in a brainstorming session that I had ever, never, ever, ever, ever seen. Because it, mostly it was invite the creative team, sit around and talk about the brief and ask if anybody had an idea, period. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever did because there was no process involved. It was always everyone looking to the creative team going like, do you guys have any ideas? And there was crickets in the room. Um, and that went on for years and years and years. And so, you you know, you'd leave the room, you'd kick the brief down to the creative department. They'd stay up all night doing God knows what. And hopefully they'd come up with something brilliant by the morning, the next morning when you had to pitch it. So uh, Karen Palmer gave me the first glimpse that there could be another way. I then went to Scandinavia and I was exposed to divergent and convergent thinking through uh, my work with Tetra Pak. And it changed my life, it changed my world, and it changed how I looked at creativity and how I worked with creativity going forward. Interesting. And and so um, it, it's such a big word, creativity. Most people think that, uh, that they're not creative because they don't know how to draw or they don't know how to paint or they don't know how to sculpt or write music or those types of things. But really, we are all creative at heart. We're innately creative, aren't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. Every human being is born into this world as a creative being, every single human being. And I think there's there is a confluence of events that happen. Um, people view creativity as drawing, painting, sculpting, musicians. No, there's more to it than that. Um, and and also school, you know, you're either creative or you're not creative. And somewhere along the line, very early in your school life, you get labeled and that label is wrong. And then there's this word that you and I have been discussing called adulting. And, and, and when people are supposed to grow up and become mature and become an adult, that creativity is supposed to be left behind in your childhood years. 
which is 100% wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, creativity now is a buzzword, but a lot of people don't understand really how simple, how easy, and how wonderful it can be versus I've got to take a painting class. It doesn't have to be that. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about school. Um, I was, uh, oh, it was maybe grade 10. Um, I was asked by the art teacher to drop the class because I <gasps> clearly was not good enough. And I just loved the idea of, you know, learning how to play with different tools and, and clay. And, and yeah, I was maybe lousy at it, but I was literally asked to drop the class because I wasn't very good. So I spent a lot of time uh, in my teenage years and in my early adult years thinking that I was not creative at all. Not awful. It, it, it's, it's terrible, but it's very, very typical of what went on. Somebody along the line put a label on your head and, and it was an unfair label and it was wrong to do that. Um, I'm all about stories. So I'll tell you a quick story. Mm -hmm. I was in, not recently because of COVID, but I was in New Jersey and I was working with the Hackensack University Medical Association. So it was a group of doctors, nurses, administrators, like all levels of people who worked within the Hackensack University Medical uh, System. And I, as I used to do before COVID, I put out pots of Play-Doh and toys and rubber chickens and coloring sheets and crayons and scented markers. And one of the women um, sitting near the front opened the Play-Doh and literally put her nose in the Play-Doh, always it's a brand new Play-Doh, even before COVID, and said, oh, I could see it light up in her eyes. And I said, what's happening? And she said, why the hell did I end up doing this? And I said, what do you mean this? And she said, I'm a hospital administrator and I hate every day of my working life. I wanted to be a sculptor. And as soon as I smelled that Play-Doh, I remembered how much joy it used to bring me as a kid to have my little barbershop with the cranks and the hair, the Play-Doh hair coming out of the guys. And I need to go back there. Wow. I said, Yes. Yes, you do. And she's written to me ever since, and that must have been eight years ago now. Immediately following the session, she said, I went to like a community art class and, and I signed up for sculpting and it's changed my life. And yes, I'm still working in the hospital as an administrator, but I, I love what I do so much more because I have the other side of me now that's been reignited, which is the creativity side. And by her own admission, she says, I think I stink. And I'm like, nobody gets, you don't judge and nobody should judge. If it brings you joy, then you're being creative. And she said it's changed how she looks at everything because just having that creativity ignited in her again changes your view of the world. That is amazing. And, you know, you do some very unique things in organizations. So I love that story because that's, that's supporting an individual inside the organization to be happier coming to work every day. Absolutely. Because they can find their joy. They might not commercialize their creativity and that's fine, but they have rekindled something in them. So talk to us about, and by the way, um, for anybody in the audience, please um, put your comments in the chat. And uh, if you have any questions and I'll monitor that as well. Uh, but you know, talk about how the process really helps to ignite an organization and what that impact is on an organization. It's, it's showing an organization that there can be a perfect balance between the left brain analytical Excel spreadsheet side of your life and the right brain, creativity, interesting, playful side of your life. Mm -hmm. And so again, another little story, if you'll indulge, indulge me, Libby, yeah. uh, because I find that the, the, if I talk, it's one thing, but if I explain in a story format that people retain the information and they're more interesting anyway. So I was hired by RBC by their um, senior investment group uh, to do a job again before COVID uh, in old Montreal, you know, beautiful hotel, beautiful everything. It felt like being in Paris. Um, 
the senior, senior investment guys from all over the country came into this beautiful room in this hotel in old Montreal. And on the tables, there was Play-Doh crayons, you know, rubber chickens, all, all the things I normally do. And, and when people walk into a room and they don't know what to expect, there's some speaker they've never heard of. Maybe they've checked me out online. Maybe they haven't. I get three, one of three different reactions. Number one, oh, this is going to be amazing. I'm so excited. And they run to their assigned table and they open their Play-Doh when they go. Mm -hmm. Number two is, uh uh-oh. (laughs) <laughs> it looks like she's going to ask me to be creative. And somebody gave me a label a long time ago that said, I'm not a creative person and I'm really scared. And they'll say to you, I'm really scared. I'm, I'm, are you going to ask me to be creative? Cause I'm really scared at that. And I'm not a creative person. Mm-hmm. And the third reaction is what the hell is this? <laughs> they'll pick up their phone. They'll be busy on emails. I have to go to a meeting I am not sitting down. This is stupid. Yeah. The first one is the most incredibly honest reaction. Wow. Look at this. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. The second one is also honest in telling me that I am not a creative person and I'm afraid. So thank you for saying you're afraid. And the third one is usually from a very senior executive who will use busy to mask fear. Mm -hmm. I've got to go. I'm on a call. I've been called into a meeting. Anyway, RBC Montreal, there was a man who walked into the room. His name is Stefan. And Stefan would not sit at his assigned team table. He would not engage. He was on his phone, standing as close to the door as he could in an effort to think of a reason to leave. Mm -hmm. So I started the session and when I start my sessions, I always explain why it's not just throwing toys on a table. So it looks like a daycare for the sake of it looking like a daycare. There is brain science behind why every single thing is there. Mm -hmm. So he was listening as he was on his phone. And as we got into the first exercise, he marched towards the table made sure he had the scented marker he wanted, which was raspberry, and went directly to the large pad of paper and started directing the team kind of as taking on the team captain role. He loved it. The team was incredibly excited. They came up with really terrific ideas. So for me, the job is to allow all different kinds of perspectives and thinking styles to enter the room and enter the process in any way they feel they want to. Mm -hmm. And essentially to prove to them that this setup, this, this play, this idea of giving people an opportunity to play, whether it's silently playing with some Play-Doh or scribbling or building with Lego bricks or whatever they're doing, that, works. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I start to show them divergent, which is the play aspect, and then convergent, which is force some of these random thoughts into a challenge statement or opportunity statement, to quote your business, um, (laughs) and they come up with these brilliant things, they say, wow, there's got to be something to this. Mm -hmm. And they begin to realize that there, there's magic in it and, and there's science in it. So the two brains come together and they do start to believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And, you know, I've seen the lip service. I've experienced the lip service where a few little toys are scattered on the table. And, uh, it, you know, I've, I've gotten in trouble in my past corporate life for, you know, shooting some kind of toy across the room accidentally in the middle of a very serious discussion. So if you're going to do it, you have to do it properly. You have to know that this is a process and not just an idea of putting some toys on the table. So if anybody listening has been putting some toys on the table, um, great, uh, but more is required. So um, we'll talk about how to get in touch with you uh, toward the end of our conversation. you know, I was telling you this morning, I didn't know whether you knew about George Land's, Dr. George Land's study that he did with NASA. And so, um, you know, the science 
So you can't think of a more scientific organization than NASA. <laughs> they send rockets to outer space and uh, bring them back and the people in them safely to Earth. And so NASA was very good at hiring rocket scientists and engineers and all of those people that are required and essential for sending people to the moon and other places. Um, but they felt that they needed some creative genius. And so they hired uh, George Land, and I'm forgetting the other researcher's name. If anybody knows, put it in the chat for me. Um, and they came up with a very simple definition. <clears throat> Creative genius is the ability to uh, do use divergent thinking and creativity in problem solving. Easy peasy. So, but what they decided to do was they being the researchers, uh, they wanted to test their theory broadly. So they took 1600 uh, age four and five year old kids and uh, decided to test their creative genius based on the simple definition. And of course, 98% of four and five year olds were deemed to be creative geniuses. So they followed uh, this pattern and, and looked at grade school children and the drop was significant. It went down to, I think, I've got it written down here somewhere, 30%. So from four to five to grade school, so maybe grade seven, right? Top of grade school, your creative genius, um, the number of, of people still deemed to be creative genius, down to 30%. High school, down to 12%. And by the time you're an adult, only 2% of adults are deemed to be creative geniuses. And that is a system that, again, back to adulting um, and being serious. And, you know, um, this is serious business. We can't take the time to play. We have to make decisions. We're missing a huge opportunity in our corporations, in our organizations, whether profit, nonprofit, and in our uh lives, for goodness sakes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think innovation, creativity, these words, they're buzzy words. Mm -hmm. um, but people, I think they just need to realize it's a very simple thing and all of us have to do it. And that a couple of, a couple of tangents I'll go down. Number one, the world, I believe, it, a lot, I couldn't, but anybody can get an MBA. Anybody can get a master's. I mean, not really anybody, but you know what I'm saying. Those things are there for the taking. But they say that in the business world, the way that people will be defined as future leaders is their ability to be creative, mm -hmm. their ability to harness and, and, and leverage innovation within their organization. Um, because that's not something that can be taught in school. It's something that's born into, into all of us. Um, the training that I received both in Scandinavia and then, then at the Creative Problem Solving Institute conferences and Creative Education Foundation in the University of Upper State New York in Buffalo, they had some really interesting research that they presented at a conference that said they had little kids, I don't know how little, maybe they're 10 years old, sit down and do math. And they scanned their brains, like showed what amount of color was lighting up inside their brains when they, when they did math. And then they had them paint a picture um, with like finger, finger paints and and then do math. And the differences were astonishing. Mm -hmm. The difference between the ease they had with the math after they had done something with their hands, creatively painting, finger painting, and the amount of their brain that was lit up. It's, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple. But somehow somebody along the line said, you don't have permission to be that anymore. And yeah. I say to people, you want to be creative? in times of pandemic, order something you've never eaten before from a delivery service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's creative. 
Because you're stepping out. It's just about stepping out of the comfort zone and experiencing something different. And then all of a sudden, it ignites new thinking, new thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it's it's about growth. And learning creates growth. And we are driven to grow. You know, we have these quantum leaps in our lives from the time we're born to maybe the time we are very, very early in our career. We go from crawling to walking, to talking, to being little people, to, you know, starting to intellectualize. And and they're these massive leaps. And then we get to adulthood and we do these little incremental things. In my business, I help people get out of their own way and stop doing that incremental little bitty stuff and take on what it is that they really want. And that is getting out of your way. And it's also, I want to be cognizant of time. we got 10 minutes left. I want to talk about two things. One is um, two words, both beginning with F, uh, that are very clean, LinkedIn, uh, that stand in the way and that you got to get over. And then I want to shift and talk about your latest innovation, which I think is very exciting. So let's talk about those two words that both begin with F. They're both very clean words. Thank you. And and I can't take responsibility for, for for F words. This actually originally came from Linda Lundstrom, who I had the pleasure of interviewing recently. Um, F is for fear, capital F fear, capital F failure. And, and, and both of those things inhibit us from doing things that make us uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Fear by itself, what if I fail? They walk and talk the same language. They walk hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And, and, and people have this lizard brain that makes them want to or creates an opportunity for them to protect themselves. Oh, no, don't do that. That could be dangerous. You are fearful. You could get hurt. Yep. Or what if I fail? Whoever said that failure was bad? Our parents, our teachers, our school system, I'm not sure. But those two F's are the two biggest F's standing in the way of you and your creative self that was there from the beginning. And when I say to people, go back, like the woman from the Hackensack University uh, network, hospital network, um, go back in your mind and think about what you love to do as a kid Mm -hmm. and do that and start there. And for her, it was sculpting. For other people, it can be lego bricks it can be scribbling it can be it can be cooking it can be reading it can be as you said libby this is not defined as fine art this Mm -hmm. is just defined as what makes you happy what ignites that kid inside you that will free up your brain the way it was when you were five yeah and you know both you and i know the fun the enlightenment and the opportunity that comes from having your fear and going for it anyway. Yes. And so for me, it's been learning this ridiculous system called doing LinkedIn live and using a streaming <laughs> service and it's terrified me. And I, my first three didn't even go live because I didn't know how to use the system and that's okay. It's a learning opportunity. Um, but, you know, stepping up and stepping into something when it seriously kind of, freaks you out is a great sign that maybe you should go for it. So I want to kind of finish our conversation with this. This is your latest innovative thinking, your creative genius at play. And I love it. So why don't you tell us how you came to uh, wanting to do a podcast and getting these amazing guests on your new show called Breaking Brave. Thank you, Libby. And thank you for that beautiful slide of these guests. Um, Bravery is something that is a word that's always stuck really hard with me in my heart. Um, I've always wanted to be brave. I've always tried to be brave. I've always tried to live in in a brave way. So people that are broadly painted or could be painted as brave have always inspired me. We hit we hit the pandemic and all of a sudden the whole world had to be brave. And it felt to me like 
you know, I could go on and do a podcast about creativity and the work that I do, but I, but I, I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do something where I was inspired and that would help the world to hopefully be like up their brave game. Mm-hmm. So I don't define brave as grabbing a sword and running out into battle. Brave can be ordering that thing on your delivery service that you've never eaten before. It, mm-hmm. it, it it's, it's any sort of brave. So these individuals you've got on the slide were incredible interviews that I did on Breaking Brave and they told their stories and they told them honestly and authentically, obviously, and every single human being on the planet has a brave story to tell. And it's been very inspiring to me and very educational for me during these dark days of the pandemic. And I hoped it would be for the listeners. And so that's Mm -hmm. why I started it. And it is, and it is so good. And Marilyn, you are a fantastic interviewer. Um, and there are some episodes that I still have to catch up on, but you, you must all take a listen to Breaking Brave and you can find them on any of the streaming services just by going to Spotify or Apple or, you know, whoever you use and just typing in Breaking Brave and you'll, you'll find them. And it's funny, you know, Marilyn, you and I've known each other a long time, uh, but we haven't been in contact, but I have followed you on LinkedIn and have always thought that your business was very interesting. And when you announced that you were going to be doing this podcast on Breaking Brave, I did something that was very scary for me. I reached out to you and I said, I've been brave. You can interview me. <laughs> and you said yes. So that's that's yet to come. But um, no, that's really- actually I'm interrupting and I shouldn't do that on a live broadcast, Libby, but that's yet to come. It'll be out next week. Oh, awesome. it'll be out next Thursday. Awesome. Um, and your brave journey has been something fantastically interesting to me that I never knew about you. And I think oh, we did the edit of it and I listened to it. So you haven't heard it yet, but oh. it's fabulous. You're going to oh, love it. I'm and I so- I just. I, I want people to be brave and, and, and brave can apply to the thing from Uber Eats or wherever you order from, or it can be facing some of the big F words in your life. And uh, it can be anything, but I think bravery is what we all need, yeah. even to be creative. Sometimes to step into, I'm going to walk into a toy store and I'm going to buy myself a pot of Play-Doh because that's the stuff that I really loved as a kid. Somehow that feels brave to me because the whole world is saying, what are you doing? You're 50 years old. You don't play with Play-Doh anymore. Yeah. Yes, I do. And wait and see the impact it will have on your life. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I I love your toys. Um, I have a few of my own and uh, I got to get some of your chickens that actually lay eggs when you squeeze them. They look like so much fun. Um, So Marilyn, we're, we're wrapping up and I want to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you. So I mean, obviously, uh, you're on LinkedIn, so people can just simply connect with you uh, and send you a message. But Marilyn's um, email, of course, is here. And this is my show, so everybody knows how to get in touch with (laughs) with me (laughs) if you're here. Uh, And this will be available for replay and on YouTube later on today. So Marilyn, thank you again. I love talking to you. I love talking about creativity and innovation. I've got a presentation that I'm, you know, getting ready for, for tomorrow. And I'm going to put some creative play into what it is that I have to do and make sure that tomorrow, my Zoom uh, meeting tomorrow will at least have me surrounded by my toys that I can uh, look at, play with and, and have some fun with. So Marilyn, Thank you so, so very much. And I encourage everybody to, uh, your business leader, if you're looking at your next strategic planning session, get in touch with Marilyn. She actually knows what she's talking about. Thank you, Libby. It was such a delight. We could have gone on for days. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. And thank you everyone for coming. It's been wonderful. 